Thank you so much, Daryl. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Wednesday. We are halfway through our week. Um, sorry if there's any Saturday librarians out there, library staff. Um, I'm so glad that you all could join us this afternoon for this brainstorming session. I do want to encourage you, if you have a webcam, please feel free to turn it on. I love for this to feel more like a conversation and less like me putting information out. Um, for those who've never attended one of these brainstorming sessions, I really like for um, you all to do most of the talking, and I'm just really here to kind of help guide conversation. Um, so if you have a webcam, please pop on and say hello. Um, before we really just start deep diving in, I did want to share with you all that I did create a Google Doc um, similarly to what I did last year for those who were here. I'm going to put that link in and then I'm also going to share my screen for just a very brief moment um, so that you can sort of see what I'm talking about. Um, but last year, one thing that folks had really requested was a way to, hi Kate, yay, I, oh, you ran away. <laughs> I love it when I'm not the only one on screen because I mean, I don't want to stare at myself for an hour, so it's always much more pleasant when there's other folks around. Um, so on the screen, you should be seeing this Google Doc. Um, this is open for you all to add information to. Um, it's a great resource to share information in a written spot. Um, we can continue to add to this as we're moving along and getting closer to summer and you can add to it, you can share it with colleagues. So I just wanted to do a brief sort of drive by so you could see what this looks like. We have several tabs. The first one is just general programming ideas. So if you have a really you know, exciting program um, that you would love to share out, you can put the information in there. Um, if it's in the CSLP activity, uh, if we know that it's there, if it's one you pulled from that manual, then we know that we can go look there. And if you're comfortable putting your information so that way if people have more questions about the steps you took or the resources you used, that's really helpful. Um, we also have a tab for uh, make and take or grab and goes, whatever your, your personal verbiage is at your library for those libraries who've really taken on this, um, this version of programming where you create bags and you send them off with your patrons to go do activities at home. Um, but I know that too, especially after two years of doing this, sometimes our creativity can run a little dry. Uh, so it's always wonderful to get new, fresh ideas. Um, so again, feel free to share those. Um, external presenter ideas, especially if they're thematic, if they have theme-related programs. Um, I'm also going to plug the Flip uh, Performer Directory that we did open. We have three whole performers sitting on there. Um, but that is sort of an ongoing, not just summer performers, but just performers in general. Um, and then prize or incentive ideas. I know some libraries don't do incentives, but some do. And sometimes it, you know, again, trying to come up with new and fresh ideas. Um, so that is there. So feel free, you know, you don't have to run and try to fill this up as we are on the conversation today, um, but just know that it's there. Um, I will also send it out in my follow-up email. So that way, Again, you can continue to add to it, continue to come back to it and see what other people have added as well. Um, I received a lot of really positive feedback last year um, with this. People really enjoyed having it. So it's something that I wanna keep moving forward. So with that said, um, I really wanna kick off. And as Daryl said, um, we, right now, I think everybody is muted by us, but in a minute, he's going to hit that unmute button, so that way it's just easier for us to have a conversation. Um, but again, be mindful of background noise and just make sure that you are self-muted. Um, but I want to hear from you all. So does anybody want to kick us off and share you know, a particular program or activity idea for Oceans of Possibilities that you are just really jazzed about? I really want to do something with SpongeBob. I haven't thought it out yet, but very excited for that possibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very fitting, isn't it? <laughs> Bring in that pop culture. Um, I, oh. Go ahead. 
Hi, this is Monica from Miami Dade Public Library. Um, so we've been working um, with um, like a turtle program. So um, we we're probably going to be you know doing um, well. I'm not sure where we're heading with COVID, but whether Zoom or in person programs, you know, with with turtles and you know turtle conservation and um and then yesterday we actually spoke to an artist um, who had great ideas for um, like um, coasters or some kind of um, 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 craft program with seashells. Um, that, that you know she's going to be thinking about so um, those are just two of the ideas that you know we've been talking about <laughs> i love it i love how primed florida is for this theme even if you're not ocean <laughs> or front you know we we are covered with water <laughs> of some sort so it really is amazing that we have a lot of these very local resources to pull from Um, we got this idea from another library, but they're doing a um, Pokemon um, like partnership with the park where they put water Pokemon out and you check it on your Pokedex as you walk. Um, and so we were thinking about doing the same thing, like partnering with a local park and making some kind of Pokemon um, hunt, but with water Pokemon specifically. My kids would be on that in a hot minute. <laughs> We actually are super excited. Um, people in the Panhandle area, so like like Leon County, you know, people from Bay County are on here. We're east of the Panhandle, but we still meet up. We're, we're in North Florida. Um, if anyone's familiar with the Gulf Specimen Marine Lab, they have something called the Sea Mobile, which is literally a portable aquarium with a touch tank. Um, they are super pricey, <laughs> but our friends group had um, recently gotten a good donation, like a nice donation for like library programming, and they were able to cover that for us. So um, if you're interested in that, um, maybe find some local businesses that will help you sponsor it. Or if you also have an awesome friends group, like they were all about it. I was very happy and very surprised. So um, maybe look into that because I'm super pumped. And I didn't say this earlier, but if you all would too, um, whether you're on camera or not, if you will also tell us which library and sort of which area in Florida you are from, I think that would be really helpful um, too, because it's an opportunity for us to get to know people we don't normally see. Um, and even if you're not on camera, feel free to throw it in the chat where you're from. Um, but I think that's really helpful too. And we do have some folks throwing some information in the chat. I know not everybody's able to use a, a microphone. Um, but we did have someone else say that they're also working with their local sea turtle conservation group. Um, Michelle said that they've planned a teen adult Zentangle art program, and it's a six week program. Um, Michelle, I would love to know sort of what your plans are. I don't know if you have a mic available. Um, you know, sort of what your plan is approaching this is not just a, a you know, a one and done kind of a program, but kind of building it for six weeks. Um, yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can. Hi. Okay. It worked out. Nobody showed up for my program in Bryceville yet, so I joined the group. <laughs> I always love hearing the ideas. Um, basically, what happened, um, are any of you familiar with Zentangle art? Yes, I see some of you shaking your hands. Okay. It's um, for anybody who you think you can't draw or you can't, you're not artistic. It's like a beginner's program where they give you it's special paper you use, like you can use a three by five size, a three by three, and it's a special type of paper where you create designs and the designs end up becoming art. Um, so it's, it's one of those art programs where you can't mess up. So I loved that. Um, I was introduced to it um, for Christmas as a gift for the staff. We had a holiday staff meeting and our director had begun taking Zentangle classes from this artist that specializes in, in Zentangle. And so she gave us that as a gift and it's very th therapeutic. <laughs> if you don't think you can mess up, you can't, you know, so you're able to really be creative. It brings out a lot of creativity. Uh, but it was actually created to help 
people relax. Um, and it's really beautiful. So you could do different designs, like they have butterflies. They have, we're actually gonna do a turtle. So we're gonna focus on turtles. And then what you do is you create Zentangle around the turtle picture. So it's art within art, if that makes any sense at all. So what we've decided to do, um, we're gonna, this particular, teacher, instructor in uh, Nassau County, she's in Fernandina. And it's, to me, it's amazing that you take, I'll just give you an example. Like in a corner of the paper, you would do one design, like, you know, the at sign in, like your email, the at sign. So what we did in one little corner, you just like you draw certain, you know, you do borders. And then you drew like a little one and, and then you kept doing a bigger and bigger and you did four corners of the paper. And by the time you were finished doing that little at sign and then going around it with a different design, it made a beautiful, you know, it made a beautiful picture after you were finished doing that. But you do multiple, Zentangle is you do multiple signs like that was one of them and another one was a curly cue and then, but it's just beautiful and anybody, you can't go wrong with this art. So we only took the one little class that was 30 minutes. And so we asked her, would she be willing to come? We have a lot of teenagers that love to draw and a lot of the schools aren't offering art anymore. So we thought, why not bring Zentangle? I didn't know what it was until I was introduced and I was really, I really loved the concept. So we have her coming now to, it's really inexpensive. It'll be like $10 per student. And we'll, we'll do the classes like 20 per class and we're breaking it up. It's like two hours. They said you need two hours to really form, make something. So by the time they finish, they will be very proficient in Zentangle. So we've, what we've done, we're going to do some in February, um, but we're going to use our summer reading theme and, you know, use a turtle as one of our first ones. And we decided to combine our teams with our, adults because it's a program that both groups can get together and have a good time, you know, enjoying art. So it is, we did six weeks because it's basically like six classes to really do well in it. So we broke it up like we're doing two in February, two in March, and then two in April. And then we're going to do some in the summer. I'm going to take Fridays and do an elementary class um, with that. But we do because the materials, she will provide the materials for us, but we typically don't charge. I don't know if any of you have ever done this, but do you charge the kids to come to a program like for the art supplies? Basically, is what they're buying is their art supplies, but they get to keep all of the art supplies and the paper that's provided in the program. So, um, but I'm excited about that because it's something I love to plan programs. Don't you all love planning programs where you learn a lot and you get you get proficient at something through that program? <laughs> so. Well, and I, I love that you are combining um, the teens and the adults, because those are probably two generations that could really benefit spending some time together. So yes. I love that it's kind of bridging this opportunity for, you know, connection right. in, in a very sort of organic way and something that's kind of fun and non-stress. Right. And so I think that's a wonderful multi-generational opportunity there that will Thank hopefully, you. you know, stick with them as they move forward. Um, an opportunity to really talk with each other and learn from one another. I love it. And um, mm -hmm. Olivia had also said in the chat that um, she's looking forward to partnering um, to do a waterway cleanup and then also do some sort of recycled craft. Um, so Olivia, you're t I want to make sure I understand. So you're thinking do the waterway cleanup and then use what you pick up from that cleanup to then turn around and do a craft. Is that what you're thinking? No, I think that would be too uh, involved. What I was really <laughs> thinking is contacting our uh, reclamation person in mm -hmm. the city, have her come out and maybe do a PowerPoint and a talk. And then we would have uh, some kind of reclaimed project to do. Gotcha. Um, we've done a lot of cute stuff with uh, reclaimed soda bottles. So uh, we would do something like that maybe. Um, but I was also, I, I was intrigued by the Zentangles uh, because I've done something with our kids 
sort of like that. It's called a graph graphite transfer. Has anybody ever done a graphite transfer? You have where you take a, a cute coloring page and on the back of the page, the kid just covers the whole back of the page with pencil you know, all over cover heavy duty pencil. And then when they put it on a white sheet of paper and trace over the picture on the front, it will transfer onto the um, the paper and then they can go ahead and decorate something that they have drawn. Uh, but that's something, too, that they'll use later on in their lives. I mean, you could do that to transfer uh, pictures onto furniture to paint or to uh, all other kind of applications. So that's a neat project. I just want to add, we've done something similar to that, but with um, plastic bags. We did pet portraits last year with our teens, and they um, we printed out just like black and white Xerox copies of their pets. And they traced it with a marker and then they flipped it onto his paper, rubbed it down, and then they were able to like take watercolors and stuff and like fill in and like mm -hmm. add details. But you could do that with any animal. Watercolor ocean animal prints would be super neat, I think. Beautiful. Yeah. And I might have talked about this before um, at one of these uh, brainstorming, but we I also one time did um, a fish rubbing, but instead of getting the rubber fish, I just uh, downloaded a, a, car, a coloring page of a fish and outlined it in um, a glue gun so it was raised so then when you took a printer a print and, and you rubbed uh, the print on it and then pressed it on the paper it looked like a fish rubbing that's fun we did the fish program you're talking about one year with an artist and she used real fish <laughs> It was a smelly idea. She's, she's braver than me. <laughs> yes. The kids loved it. <laughs> it's very organic. <laughs> I love it. Anybody else have um, a program they want to share information about? I know y'all have them. We're kind of at the um, idea stage at this point rather than implementing. We're trying to scale things kind of small. Can you hear me with the mask on? Okay. Uh, our main library is closed down and we've basically taken over every community room of all the branches. So we're trying to do small scale sort of uh, like not active, but things you hand out to people or have them do like scavenger hunts. We're thinking of using that Pokemon in the park, but doing it in the library and having them around the library and they have a sheet where they have to go find the information for the animal. So that's one of the things we're thinking about doing. We're also thinking of trying to figure out a way to either do bulletin boards or a tracker where they can move their fish or ocean animal around. I love hearing that several of you are um, looking at taking that Pokemon at the pond program and adapting it. And I, ironically, Alex Phillips is in the room. So, um, you know, I imagine too, that that's probably nice for her to hear is that people have really, really enjoyed hearing about that program that she and her colleague did. And it really is very adaptable. Yeah, we thought so. She said, yay, so happy to hear that. So somebody mentioned that they wanted to do something with SpongeBob, which I thought was a really cute idea. But do you ever worry about uh, liability as far as uh, using the word SpongeBob? Or would you just use, because whenever we market something, you know, because we're a big system, Miami-Dade, if we ever market something that, uh, like someone suggested that we do a Pokemon scavenger hunt, but we decided not to because uh, using the Pokemon logo or name could be a problem. Uh, th does anyone else have concerns about that when they use 
names of big cartoons or we called it the pokemon in the park but what we're actually thinking of doing is florida animals like different types of wildlife animals with oh, the picture okay. of the animal on one side and the information on the back but using the idea behind the uh, pokemon in the park okay so, that's a cute idea yeah we, and maybe not we have the pictures but we weren't planning on using the actual pokemon characters got it, got it. are you charging money for one. your programming do you charge money for your programming well there, there shouldn't no. be a problem if you're not benefiting monetarily it's really just marketing for them that's the way i think of it that's not what i've read <laughs> I know for our library, like we, we do a lot of fandom stuff for our smaller ones. I don't know if it varies, but usually in our marketing, we keep it a little more general. And then during the program, we kind of use the characters more. Okay. But I, I think it depends on what your like systems policies are too. One time I, uh, years ago, I did a Barney story time and people called to say, is the real Barney going to be there? So it may put people's hopes up to think, oh, they're going to have the real people there, you know. We haven't named it or anything yet, so we may end up calling it something else. We just like the idea behind having the pictures posted around with the information on the back. We're still way early in our planning stages. Like I said, we're trying to work around the fact we've got no meeting rooms available to use for programming. So our main library is closed. So if you have good ideas that would work on a small scale, sort of, we're doing the take and make crafts, uh, but things like that, that would work under space restrictions that we're working with right now. We've been doing some outdoor programming. Um, yep. and plazas in front of libraries in the grass, you know, things like that. So, yeah, but we're, we're warm here in the winter. So, but in the summer it gets really hot and we did do some like under trees in the morning and things like that. Uh, story times under a tree in the morning. Yeah. Awesome. I know we're going to try and do some park things. Oh, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Looks like Alexandra Walsh. Oh. I had I had a suggestion. If you don't have any room space, um, our system actually this last year, and we're working on doing it again. We um, partnered with our our county amphitheater, um, and we did a system wide program there um, to so that we didn't have to do large scale program um, in any of our branches. Um, at that point, we really hadn't started in-person programming just yet, but this was at a Lardu outside, um, and it went really well. And we um, were able to get our local uh, magician to come and do uh, two of his shows back to back there. So there may be some other venues that maybe you could partner with. We chose a weekday morning when we didn't ever have shows. Um, so they were more than happy to let us use the space for free. Um, we just had to staff it and clean it, um, and it worked out really well. I'd like to add on what Alexandra was saying. Um, I got in touch with my um, like city parks and rec because we have an amphitheater really close by um, the library from where we're at. And we did outdoor story times there. It was like a nice covered area. But we also have partnered with um, local community with local community centers. And um, they're really big and have giant gyms. So we were able to put people and have them all spread out. And it also attracted an audience kind of outside of our normal you know, library families. Um, so that was really nice to bring some new people into library programming as well. Good ideas, thank you. Does anybody else have a program that they would like to share or um, maybe a challenge you've run into that you want to throw to the group and see if somebody has a, a magical answer for you. Kimberly shared that the Florida 
Oceanographic Society has a live fish cam on their website too. Um, they have live feeding shows at 11 and 2. I know the Florida Aquarium also has a lot of educational resources on their website as well. Diana asked, is anyone using a pirate theme program? Well, you're definitely thinking about it and that's always a fun, uh, fun theme. We did a pirate, or we do an annual pirate day at our library. So when kids come in, we're like dressed as pirates and we might make them walk the plank for candy or it's not like a program program, but they're just, as they come through, We'll like heckle them and it's always very fun so i think there's also opportunities to just dress up one day and act like pirates we um a few years ago because i'm i'm in st augustine so it's like pirate capital um we have had a look there's there's a lot of local pirates um so we had one of the most popular ones um come in and do a program for us um which which did really well it was it was adorable um and I, a couple of years ago we hired one of the um one of the character party businesses i'm sure you will have them in your local area too right like the, the young women who dress up as princesses and go to birthday parties that sort of thing um we had um ariel or they just called her the whatever non-copyright version of you know that name um we had her come and she sang a song um and read a story and then we set up a bunch of um like little mermaid themed crafts to go along with it um, so that was a while ago now, so I don't know, I may try and bring it back for the summer. And in the chat, Maria did talk about, um, they did a, a Percy Jackson program, which could also apply to this upcoming summer because he's the, you know, son of Poseidon. <laughs> um, so if you want to take a little fictional mythology there. Um, so they gave out bags with supplies for lightning in a bottle and creating a fortune teller for prophecies. Um, and then they did virtually, um, they used Kahoot and played virtual werewolf, but rethemed it for Camp Half-Blood. Um, Maria, that would be some great craft ideas to throw in that Google Doc spreadsheet, um, either links to where you, you know, had the, the lightning in a bottle or things like that. I'll, I'll throw them up there. <laughs> that would be great. Purely professional, not at all because my child has just started reading The Lightning Thief. And <laughs> Jessica did ask, is, um, is everyone planning on bringing back movie nights for those who've done them? Um, she said, I feel like a lot of folks took the plunge over the last couple of years and subscribed to streaming platforms. I'm wondering if movie programs will have the same draw that it used to a few years ago. So we do have some people responding in the chat about starting them back up or they've done a few. Um, Kate, I'd love to hear, you said that y'all have done some interactive movie showings and they've been fun. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, interactive movies are awesome because you can do whatever size group of people you want and they are relatively inexpensive outside the licensing cost. Um, a lot of libraries have also adopted them into take home kits. So if you are a library that is not open to the public yet or you're nervous about large group gatherings you can make take-home kits of them as well but um if any of you are familiar with like rocky horror picture show like viewings and like you do certain actions like certain times during the movies like that but for kids it's like a family friendly version of that um there are lots of free scripts available i threw a link of one up in the chat um we do them normally around holidays so a few years ago we did um hocus pocus at halloween 
this Halloween, we did A Nightmare Before Christmas. That was super well attended. One of the dads even had like a head to toe Oogie Boogie costume. It was amazing. He was so cool. And then <laughs> at Christmas time, we did Polar Express and I hired a really awesome local Santa. So um, families could watch Polar Express and then I pulled them out in small groups a little bit of time and they got to go visit with Santa. Um, so they're really awesome. Last year in the manual, I think they had Finding Nemo. And I remember thinking that'd be a really cool one to do this year. So like Finding Nemo or Finding Dory, something that everyone has seen a lot and knows really well. Those are the best interactive movies. I know. I was just thinking, man, if only there was like a really well-known movie franchise that took place in the ocean. <laughs> in the great blue. <laughs> I'm just trying to skim through the chat, make sure we're not missing, missing anything. But of course, feel free to pop in. Y'all don't have to just stare at me looking at chat. Diana did ask if there's any way or any exceptions to offer moving showings without a license. They have a park. I will say I am not the legal expert, um, but I think that typically you need to have a license to show to a group of people. Um, however, if anybody on the line has found a legal way to do that, um, that might be a really good question for your library, city or county attorney, um, just to make sure. Um, although Catherine did say open source movies, um, I'm not sure what's going to be out there that you think might be open source and relevant and, you know, interesting to this sort of family kids age group, but there could be something. Um, but yeah, usually that licensing is giving you permission to show it to a group of people. Kimberly said, maybe Moby Dick. I don't, I don't know enough to know enough. <laughs> Catherine said, make your own. There you go. There's a program. Make your own movies that are related to the ocean theme and then have a movie showing. <laughs> that would be fun. Jennifer said the Miami Dade Parks and Rec Department works with freshwater education, ocean conservation, and something called Echo Adventures. Michelle said we went to our local state park, Fort Clinch, and showed Jaws to teens and adults on a movie screen right on the ocean. They didn't want to get in the ocean and watch it. <laughs> Isn't that a thing where the movie was filmed? Like, don't they collectively get together annually or something and they all sit out in the water on floats and watch it or something? I feel like I've seen something like that. Love it. So, um, is anybody else, um, I know. This is probably a topic everybody is just exhausted by after two years going on three. Um, is there anybody who, any libraries who are still just strictly looking at virtual programming? Or is everybody who's at least on the line, are you kind of at a point where you're maybe dipping a pinky toe back into in person, even if it's maybe outdoors or distanced or? Um, Catherine said in person 100%. Michelle said we're offering both. Does anybody have any virtual? Because I think most of what we've talked about, while some of it could easily be adaptable, um, does anybody have, you know, kind of a new and exciting take on a virtual program that they want to share for those who are looking at virtual? Oh, Deanna said she just did her first story time last week in 22 months. Was that emotional? Maybe because I'm warm and fuzzy, but I feel like that would just be... <laughs> to have your babies back.
Yeah, so I see a lot of people who are either doing in-person or in-person and virtual. Does anybody have a really fun, cool craft they want to share that they're looking at doing? Or since we're sort of focusing in this conversation on the, you know, sort of zero up to 11, do you have um, either a story time book that's related to the theme that you particularly love um, that you think everybody else should know about? I think I'm gonna bring back one of my art lab classes that I, I did a number of years ago on Hokusai's Great Wave and talk about the series. Um, uh, so the Great Wave off Kanagawa um, because it's easy, it's an easy art project for multiple ages. Um, so bring that one back. I've, in the past, I've done it with either oil pastels or chalk, um, depending on the age group. I love it. Lots of book recommendations coming in the chat. I'll also make sure to pull the chat out. Um, I think I usually do that for these brainstorming sessions because sometimes there's just as much valuable information sitting in that chat as what we talk and vocalize about. Um, so I'll also send that along to um, Shark in the Park, Not Quite Narwhal. Fun stuff. How are you all looking at sort of marketing your program this year? Are you doing it differently in the last couple of years because you are sort of a little bit more open for business going into the schools? Some of y'all, we've been together for four years now. I, I'm gonna start calling some names out here because I know some of y'all have some great ideas. I will, oh, I don't think we have Cindy on the line. Cindy from Lake Worth, I think. I need to get in touch with, I need to get in touch with her. But um, Emily Hart, my colleague said that what they're looking at doing there is partnering with their local lifeguards to like catch people reading on the beach. And if they catch them, they're like gonna give them this ticket that's got like summer reading information that's like a congratulations you've been caught reading kind of a thing um i need to get more information because i've heard this through you know third party information but uh, if you are somewhere where there are lifeguards be it a beach a lake a pool um that might be another sort of fun get caught reading especially may, i mean may is get caught reading month um but yeah, I thought that was very clever. That's adorable. We we also partnered with our local lifeguard um, the last couple of years. Uh, they come and talk about swimming safety since it's during the summer, and they also bring their um, oh, what is it? Their jet ski um, that they use, and they let the kids get on the jet ski and take pictures. It's so cute. I <laughs> I have a photo of myself from a few right, years you don't ago. Think I was be a huge program. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, like jet ski, having the kids on jet skis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got to, it's like, you know, it's like checking out the fire truck or something, but it's the jet ski. I'm just saying, if, if anybody needs to, if anybody wants to do a jet ski program on the water and you need an adult as tribute, I will take one for the team. You're like, yeah, I promise. <laughs> That's really fun. And I love the water safety because I think water yeah. safety month is, it's, I, you know, I made that whole calendar of water related things, but at we this point, we're all jumbled in our, like, our congregation. Oh, God, a decade or more ago. But, you know, everyone has to sign waivers and that's a sleepaway camp, not. 
I'm not sure if, um, okay. I'll say the Citrix wasn't telling me who was on the phone, but I wasn't sure if I was interrupting somebody or not. Um, Michelle said, uh, FWC Florida Wildlife offers a fishing camp and brings the fishing poles and trains families how to fish. And Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, or I don't know if you know, but don't they also, um, sometimes don't they also give out free fishing poles? Because I think some libraries partnered with them to circulate fishing poles. Um, and I, I, again, this is me trying to remember something from years ago through the grapevine. Um, so that might be another option if your library has been sort of toying with this idea of circulating those non-traditional items, or maybe your library already does it and you're just looking for something else to add, is maybe checking out that fishing pole program, because that would be, you know, you could build a whole program around it as well. So we have about 17 minutes left. Um, we've talked about some program ideas. Again, if you have anything more to add, if you have you know, a program or a craft idea, um, any challenges, any roadblocks you're having um, that you wanna see if the, the hive mind can, can help you solve. Theme related incentive ideas for those who do incentives. Read a book, get a beta, get a live fish, maybe not. <laughs> oh, Jessica said passes to a local aquarium. That could be fun. Oh, Deanna, you just walked back with a box. Are you about to show us fun things? Are those brag tags? I'm trying to see. I'm getting closer to the screen because that's going to help me, right? <laughs> the medals. Jerome said brag tags have worked fairly well as well. Those are so cute. I love the narwhals. <laughs> I'm having a hard time telling what those those are. Are they magnets? <laughs> this feels like a whole new game of charades. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the next brainstorm session. Were those buttons? <laughs> I think she might be typing. Yeah, that's it. My next brainstorming session, it's all going to be acted out. So <laughs> act out your programs. One thing we do is all the kids who complete their summer reading logs, um, and we're a smaller system. We only have three branches. Um, I always do like a grand prize drawing at the end. Um, so I was going to go to either Target or Five Below and get some of like the really ridiculously big, awesome pool floats. Look like slods or like unicorns or flamingos. And I was going to get two or three of those. <laughs> and those were going to be our grand prizes this year. Um, so that's a really easy and expensive and fun one. And I'll probably even blow one up and suspend it from our ceiling so people can see it. And then we'll have a giant pool float on our ceiling all summer, which would be cool. <laughs> easy decorations. Decorations. How are y'all, how are people decorating? Anybody doing like photo booths? I've seen a lot of, on the CSLP Facebook group, I've seen a lot of people talking about doing, like creating these shark photo booths where they take cardboard and they cut out the shark and they've got the mouth and then people photo op. The 
jellyfish. Oh, do you, you got the squid hat! <laughs> I love the squid hat. Love the hat. That was, I think, when I first got to look through all the items. I, I think I'm, I was, thank goodness I was teleworking at home with only my dog to hear me because I was literally sitting on my couch going, they have squid hats. I love the squid. <laughs> and Nina was showing a picture of the, the bowl jellyfish. I love it. Super simple and very colorful. And I love it. It can be either a program or a decoration. Dual purpose. There is some talk in the chat about, um, you know, if there's safety concerns from staff doing in person, um, how everybody's sort of handling those concerns. Um, and there's some some chatter going on in the chat, but if anybody wanted to share the floor is open Jerome said one of the things they did last year was to make their programs drop in and extend them to six hours so it worked extremely well and they saw up to 130 people in one day Oh, I love the background. It's fun. Sheree said they have a mermaid tail photo up. Kimberly said she was thinking of inviting a local underwater photographer to display some photos in the library. Kimberly, it's funny you say that because I am working on some underwater photography resources for teens. Um, there's also some great stuff on Florida Memory. So if you all are interested in doing some underwater things and you're looking for, you know, free and clear photography, um, Florida Memory has the Mozart collection that belongs, that uh, our, the Florida Archives um, was able to acquire several years back. And he was a pioneer in underwater photography. Um, so there's a lot of really just great photos from like the 50s and the 60s underwater. It's very vintage. Katie said they're thinking of having bulletin boards where kids can come in and decorate fish and then they can hang it on the board. And then Crystal asked if anyone had any squid book titles for preschoolers. She had a family request squid books. I'm the biggest thing in the ocean. So I'm just sort of scrolling through chat, trying to pull out maybe something new. Joanne said we have an octopus and clamshell photo op from a previous program. Don't you love it when you find something you get to recycle and reuse? Kate said, I love a book where something or someone gets eaten. Swallow the leader would be a great one. Kids could feed fish to a shark. Yeah, it kind of makes me think too of um, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea which, I mean, my kids just own that one. So like, we also have the CD with the music that goes and it kind of goes into that, you know, kind of one thing, eating the other, eating the other, eating the other. Joanne said, if you have a glass lobby, you could make it like an aquarium, have the kids color and bring in their fish to add. And Deanna said, we always have the readers put their name on a tag to hang on the wall of vinyl, vinyl poster. Last year it was critters, it's been shoes and stars. So we are down to about nine minutes. Um, 
I love these brainstorming sessions because I feel like I learned so much about what you all are doing. It's kind of a chance to showcase your creativity. Squidnapped is a fantastic pun title and I love it. For anybody who's been around me longer than five minutes, you know that I tend to clutch onto any pun I can get my hands on to, which I should probably apologize for. So I know that this year, and I don't know how many people we have on the line here, I did ask this in the webinar that I had last week of how many people were planning their very first summer program, either because um, maybe you've been involved with it in the past, but this is your, your first year sort of taking the helm or taking the lead. Um, we've had a lot of people who, you know, have moved on to other positions and new people have been hired in. So what I would really love to do is for those of you who've done this for several years, will you share just a tip or a tidbit or something that you've learned that kind of makes this process easier for you to pass along to our folks who are doing this for the very first time? Because I know that y'all have them. I, I know that it's such a learning experience every year. Um, and especially, you know, coming into this and having to plan it when things are still very tumultuous and still very uncertain to boot. Um, so yeah, so our, our veteran planners, share some tips. And if you have a mic, please feel free to use it. Olivia said, keep it simple. Jessica said, my biggest note, at the end of the summer, make a list of what worked and what didn't. Every year before planning, I refer back to my final notes from the previous summer to build from there. Deanna said, have fun, keep it simple. I think the have fun is really important. Um, Deanna, clearly that is something that you are very good at. <laughs> I love it. I love this shark hat. That's amazing. Um, Diana said, get started now. Yes. And I will say for those who are planning this year, if you are planning on hiring external presenters, my best advice, which granted we're in January now, um, is really to start looking at those in September, October, November, the year before. Um, especially if you're hiring an external presenter that is not specifically local to you. So if you're going with like Animal Tales, which is a very large animal brand and they have, you know, animal folks that cover the whole Southeast region of the United States, um, they book up very quickly and very early on. Um, and so if you're having to sort of prioritize your planning, my recommendation is to always get those external presenters done first because you always have time to go in and plan your crafts and your story times and your programs. Um, but some of these folks, they fill up fast. Jennifer said, I made a display cube of Jules Verne 20,000 leagues under the sea. The kids love it. Oh, Jennifer, I'd love to see a picture of that if you could email it to me that I could then maybe share out in a newsletter. Deanna said, I get started as the previous summer reading program ends. It really is. You know, it's so funny. I was having a conversation yesterday that I forget not everybody lives in perpetual summer <laughs> because we really do. We're, we're either working on the one right now or we're finishing that one up and then we're having to think ahead. And so I forget that not everybody lives in summer. Uh, Michelle did ask if there's a presenter showcase list that is available. Michelle, I think FLA had one at, time, at, at some time. Um, I don't know if it's up to date. That was sort of what I have been trying to do with the FLIP uh, performers directory um, because that was something that, you know, it wasn't like a live showcase where you get to actually go and see them perform. 
Um, but my hope is that because recommendations were coming from other Florida Youth Services folks that hopefully were recommending people that you know you all have had good experiences with and do a really good job. Um, I can send that information out right now. There's three three performers sitting on it. Um, so I would love for people to add to that. Um, but that way, because one of the thing, one of the pieces of information I ask for is, you know, what parts of the state do these performers serve? And so that way, too, you know, you can also make sure that you're not spending a whole lot of time trying to reach out to people who maybe don't serve your area. And Crystal said, doing learning activity packets has helped us get more interactive with our early literacy families. Um, she said, I highly recommend that everyone do a few take home activities because all families enjoy having things to do at home together. And we have had lots of families that we've never seen start using our library due to the packets. I love that. Something that's not tech related because I think families are still burnt out from tech from the last couple years. And tech is great and tech has helped us connect in ways that you know, we wouldn't have been able to connect. Um, Deanna said, I don't always use the theme for summer with a presenter. Like I want Tampa Bay bats again this year. Bats, water, just cool. Bat the animal, right? Not bat the, bats are really cool. Highly misunderstood creatures, just like possums. <laughs> So I'm just scrolling through the, but again, if somebody has a mic, we're, we've got about two minutes. Um, yeah, and Tony said, I'll second Crystal's take homes. I did some fun ones while I was with HCPLC, Hillsborough County, right? Am I getting my, my acronyms correct? Uh, last summer that our families enjoyed. I mean, even just as a parent, I picked some up for my kids, um, you know, they abandoned me when it came to dissecting owl pellets and I felt a little a little left high and dry. <laughs> they were very excited until we opened it up and they were like, I'm not touching that. And I was like, well, what did you think an owl pellet was, my child? <laughs> they're like, I didn't think it was poop. Now you know. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people have been doing... Um, take and makes or grab and goes, which is fantastic. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer says she sent me the picture. Um, so, yay. Um, so we have one minute left, so I am gonna wrap up. Um, thank you all so much. Um, I hope for those of you who also uh, plan your teen programming that I'll see you on online for the teen brainstorming session as well. Um, we're also having one for adult programming. So if your summer, if your library does an adult summer program, um, whether that's you that is in charge of it, or if you have an adult services staff member who does, please feel free to share that information. Um, if you're subscribed to my Flip Forward newsletter, you should have seen the announcements come through, but I'll also include those inf that information in my follow-up. Um, but I, I am here if y'all need me. Um, if this is your first, fifth, or 10th year, um, if you just need a shoulder, you need to troubleshoot, you have a question, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and thank you all so much. It's gonna be an amazing summer and I am excited. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye. I love that hat. <laughs>